If you're just joining us, you're listening to the Daryl Davis program. Before the break, I was talking about the need to um, break this stranglehold that the Democrats have on the African American community. We vote over 90% for Democrats and look at the state of black America. And that's not to say the, the Tea Party is the, the solution, but we need to explore third party politics. We need to get back to grassroots organizing. Uh, there's a brother sitting with me right now in the studio. He's Damon K. Jones, and he is obviously somebody who's been doing that. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I got to tell you, bro, I, you know, I've been reading some of your, your articles in the Westchester Guardian and uh, other places, and uh, for a while I was saying, I got to catch up with this brother, because we're saying the same thing. That's right. And um, before you got here, I was talking about Peekskill, my hometown, passing a, 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 a law last night that you can no longer clap. Because we've been at war with them over our right to exist as a community, you know they seem to think that uh, if you, if you're not wealthy enough or right skin tone, you don't belong in, in that city. So we've resisted and organized, and so every few months they pass another law at city hall to try to shut us down. Now, how do you see? You know, I was saying that it's, it appears to me that Westchester, um, the, the the black political class establishment, is not really doing their job. No, they're not. No. Um I uh, I discussed this earlier, and, and, and brother, we we right on the same point. Um, I sent you an email that we're trying to gather people together to form a political action committee, and what the political action committee will be based on is what Martin Luther King uh, tried to start was the Poor People's Campaign to discuss issues of poor people in the community. Yes, the Democratic Party has taken us for granted. For granted, we have got nothing, nothing for a vote. If you if you look in if you look at the communities, especially the communities of color throughout Westchester County, the education system, the incarceration, and the high crime, what are we getting for our vote? What are we getting in return? So, I'm saying let's get together and be to the Democrats what the Tea Party is to the Republicans. Force them on the issue of housing. Force them on the issue of education. And if they don't want to truly address it and pass policies and be advocates for us, not, not only in Westchester County, not only in Albany, but down in Washington, D.C., then we'll vote them out and put people in place that's going to do that. Take the young uh, activists off the street and run them for elected office. We have to get to that point. We don't, you know, and, and the thing is, we don't talk enough or put enough energy into third-party politics. We seem to think that all the, the only thing out there for us is the Democratic Party, and it's, it, as you said, it's to our detriment. I mean, what are we really getting? I mean, I've literally, bro, I've been in meetings where the Democrats are like, you know, after, like in Peekskill, after two years of total abuse, total abuse, calling us outsiders, ad, outside agitators, changing the rules, threatening us with police. They two, two, three weeks ago, four weeks ago, the police surrounded me, and the mayor walked up to me, and yelled in my face, "Get out of here! Get out of here!" And then turn around and say, "Well, you got to vote for us because the other side is worse." Are you crazy? When they say stuff That's like right. that, That's right. That's it right. tells me. They don't recognize no human dignity in me. No, not only they, that, they, find they, that, they don't even recognize the rights of our people. That you know, when, when they can say that, and and then say, well, you know, the other side doesn't even want you. So you know, they're saying, you know, you, they don't even recognize that we have any dignity, that we're going to step up and, and respect ourselves. But we we have to begin to do it somewhere. Now, I I didn't even know peace skill was was like that. I'm from originally from Peace Kill. I lived on 673 Harrison Avenue. You know, I went to uh, I, I went to the school down the street. So until I was in the third grade, I moved to White Plains. So I understand that I have family. I have family up there related to the Buffaloes, the Jones. So I have family. I have a history in Peace Kill. And for Peace Kill to get that way, as me growing up, I didn't see Peace Kill like that. Well, maybe that's from a young man. But but that is a reflection on on on, on the other cities. We look at Mount Vernon. Mount Vernon is, you have a black man, you have a, 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 a black uh, city council, majority black, you have a majority black board of ed, because he can't manage a four by four square mile of the city. So what, so, so, so what do they, what do they look at the rest of Westchester as, as black politics? If we can't handle a four by four square mile of the city, you know, no wonder Barack Obama 
with some of respect. You know, then they can't be president. Right, right. You know, right understand right, what I'm saying? Right, right. So, so this, this, this disrespect in the Democratic Party goes all the way up to Barack. Why nobody is really stepping out and defending Barack from the, from the Democratic Party? And, and, and why does he have to back, back step on being a black man? He should. Well, that, that's a problem. And that, you know, that was one of the reasons why my support for Barack has been lukewarm. Being I'm being honest, because um, I, I watched him, I watched him come up. You know, I watched him. You know, the National Democratic Party speech, which was great. Right. The brother is brilliant. He is. He's brilliant. He is. And and he's definitely you know living by a set, uh, uh, two sets of rules because you know he was the editor of the, the, the law review at his college, right. prestigious college, Nobel Prize winner, um, best selling author. You know, and look at the other side of the table. All they got to do. Is be you know tell pig jokes and dabble in witchcraft and they become national leaders for the Tea Party. That's right. You understand? <laughs> that's 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 nobody right. has a problem with that. That's right. That's right. All right. That's right. So here you have this man. The other double standard. George Bush did what he did in Afghanistan and, and mm -hmm. Iraq, and you couldn't you couldn't criticize his toenails. No, you couldn't. Right. But now you got Barack and then these people are calling him tar baby, call him a liar, a congressman, call him a liar. You know, and then and openly saying we're going to sabotage his presidency. You know, and to your point about uh, why he got a back up from being black and that black elected officials aren't supporting him, they didn't support him in the beginning. They was all with Hillary. Right. You're right about that. Hillary too. was supposed <laughs> to win. And, that's and, and that's that mentality. Jump right. off the plantation and that's take right. a chance. That's right. That's right. right. That's right. So if we get strong locally, well, we understand all politics is local. And Barack said, and, and one thing Barack said, he said, change doesn't start from the top down, it starts from the bottom up. So, so we have to in our local areas, become strong politically. We have to hold our black elected officials accountable. We really, they can't get a black pass. Oh, man, we're going to continue to vote for him be, because they're black. They cannot get a black pass no more, man, because because I've been working in the jail for 22 years, and, and I've seen young men grow up, grow up, and now I'm watching their children grow up. So, so what's the problem? What's the problem? Because nobody's changing. They're not changing anything in the policy. We can march all day. We can, we can have rallies. But if we don't have the correct people in office that's actually going to change the policies that affect the community, because if you affect the poor community, ultimately you correct America. See, people don't look at it like that. They don't look at it like that. So we have to hold, especially our black elected officials, accountable. What have you done for us lately? So you just can't come to a church and, and, and just because the preacher back you, you just gonna follow that people. We we gotta hold the preachers. We gotta hold the preachers. Don't don't bring in politicians that's not doing nothing for the people and then you're backing them for political reasons. But yet we're still high in unemployed, high um, going to jail. everything the percentage is high when it comes to people of color and we're not getting nothing for it. That that's another point. I mean the clergy, come on. You know, I mean they, they take more money out of our community than, than Uncle Sam. And, and you're right, they're playing political games. That's you know, right. it's like, uh, I, I've seen it time after time. I saw it in, in with the county exec race where they, they endorsed Andy Spano and, and Spano lost. And the next day, you know, it was tripping over Andy's body to get the Astorino. Come That's on right. now. That's now right. tell me how that benefits my community. <laughs> tell me, right. how does that benefit my community? That benefits you. I've seen these preachers get grant money. That's right. You know, just That's for right. their church, not That's for their right. community. That's right. Because just like any colonialism, it's cheaper for me to take care of you, to give you $1 million, than to spend $10 million on a community center That's right. for your community. That's right. And that's the game too many preachers are playing. We're gonna, they got to get called on this. But they've been called on it already, brother. I, I, I had to I had to call out the pastor. I saw that, man. That was really a good I piece of Because I had to question the endorsement of a, of a certain male, male mm -hmm. candidate. Mm -hmm. When we had this hit, when we have a history under uh, under his under the mayor's leadership, mm -hmm. and and it, and, it, and it's out of love for the black the black um, uh, black preachers because of the fact that people rely on them to get into heaven. Okay, hold that <laughs> thought. When we come back, we're gonna talk more about getting into heaven. You're listening to the Daryl Davis program.